Diagnosis for yeast is difficult. CIFO in particular stands for small intestinal fungal overgrowth. And this is just kind of a new name for, you know, candida or yeast overgrowth. Uh, but it can be that it's overgrowing in the large intestine or the small intestine or both. And CFO is when specifically when it's in the small intestine. And Dr. Rao did those, um, did those studies. It was wonderful that he did that. He diagnosed with culture. So endoscopy. So, you know, the tube coming through the mouth, esophagus down into the small intestine, sampling what's there, the, the fluid and substances that are there growing out on culture to see if yeast, if yeast grows. So, you know, it's kind of like a gold standard, but it's an, it's an inpatient sort of a circumstance. I mean, depending on a person, a gastroenterologist's office set up. So um, that's not practical for most of us. Right. And um, by the way, you know, the fascinating things in those studies that he found, because he also cultured for bacteria for, for SIBO. Um, and what he found was the symptoms were the exact same, right? So this is why it's so important. One of, one of our big differential uh, diagnoses is yeast overgrowth and particularly in the small intestine, because how do we know <laughs> the symptoms are the same? So the, um, the other ways that you can diagnose it would be, you could consider, of course, doing a stool test. That's gonna tell you if you have it in the large intestine, but I, I used to like to combine that with, um, an organic acids urine test, because that has markers for yeast overgrowth and it can't distinguish between small and large intestine. But if you have that test and then you also have the stool test, you know, like for instance, if the stool test is negative, but the organic acid test was positive, then you know it's in the small intestine. Um, now, if the stool test is positive, then you still don't know, like you know for sure there's something in the large intestine maybe there's something also in the small intestine. It's, it's really the best we can do unless we're gonna get a culture test. And then the, um, the final test that I would often run is the blood test for the um, candida antibodies uh, plus antigen. And that's a test to check if the immune system is deciding that yeast is a problem. And there's, there's two things here. It could be deciding it's a problem, if, if it's positive, it could be deciding if it's a problem because there's overgrowth. But it could also be reacting to a normal amount of yeast that's not actually overgrown. And now this is yeast hypersensitivity, also a very pervasive problem. So one way or the other, you know that the person is having some trouble with their body, thinks there's trouble with yeast. So you can see how complicated this is and how imprecise it is and how difficult it is. And so in the end, my answer is we don't have a good test. <laughs> I mean, yes, there's the culture for just for small intestine, but that's not practical for most people.